What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. In this video, we're gonna go over the seven steps required to build a profitable online store. I'm speaking as a seven figure reseller, so I have over $100,000 a month in sales. So even though I was suspended on eBay, I just moved those sales onto a different platform. And it's important to understand that the main part of reselling is where you source your goods. So once that's set up, you can build a resale business to any size. And eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Amazon, these are just the platforms that you sell on. Uh, the main difference between what I do and a retailer is reselling. Think of it this way. It's more like recycling. I think this is probably an easier way for you to mentally grasp what I do. I find items that are going to go in the landfills, items that are liquidated, items that are, are considered salvage and written off by companies. Those are the type of goods that I sell. I'm not selling retail where you buy something wholesale from a company and then sell it retail to the consumer. That's a much different model. This is about how to build a reselling uh, business and these are the main seven steps you need to focus on to get there this is also an overview of the mentorship that i have uh, that i'm going to be launching every two months and you can follow along for free or you can join at patreon.com slash the resellers podcast but i want everyone to have a resale business because it teaches you far greater listen lessons than just building an online store it teaches you how to basically become a master of yourself and build your own schedule because working for yourself is a really, really powerful skill. And I wanna share that with everybody. So I appreciate you guys. Smash the like button, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys in the show. Step number one and the most important step to building an online profitable business is understanding your current state. Um, how much money are you trying to make? How much time do you have? How much space do you have? How much knowledge do you have? These are all important components because it will determine how long it takes you to reach your goal. Somebody who's working 24 seven on their resale business with no kids, no family, unlimited resources, that person is gonna reach their goal faster than somebody who's doing this part-time, one hour a day with, a, with kids, with a family, with aging parents, with a disability. If you have all these things on your plate, it's gonna make your, your journey different. So understanding your current state is really, really important. And I want you guys to remember, advanced eBay or eBay as a profession, in my opinion, is just reaching and maintaining your ideal sell-through rate. So what I'll, I'll go over sell-through rate more in this video, but sell-through rate is essentially is how fast should your items sell that's not determined by you per se, it's determined by the market supply and demand. So however many items that you're, of whatever you're selling are available and what the current prices are, have more of an effect of your sales than what you're doing. So it's really important to understand what you're selling is the most important thing. And advanced eBay is just selling them at an appropriate pace. So for example, if you're selling iPhones under market, those items should all sell instantly. If you're selling a non-desirable item for too much money, those items will never sell. So it's important to understand, in my opinion, advanced eBay is not how big your store is, is it, are you selling items at an appropriate pace and for the right amount of money? I would consider that's advanced eBay, not how big your store is. I've been there, done that. I've had a 28,000 item store that only sold 140 a day, and I've had a 100 item store that sells seven items a day. So it really depends on what niche you're going after, what category. But number one is understanding yourself. Self-awareness is huge. A lot of people build a business and don't really understand themselves. They don't understand their limitations and it really will hold you back. So it's important to understand. Number one is determine where you are at, write down where you think you're currently at, all your different resources and what's gonna hold you back. And that's gonna make this mentorship the best for you is understanding where you are, what your resources are, what you lack, what you're great at, if you know all that stuff, it's easy to build the rest of it out. So take some time and do some introspection. So number two is set a listing schedule. So once you understand what your resources are, it will determine how many listings you can realistically do. So as an example, when I was running my eBay store, the goal was 140 items per day at at least $20 plus shipping. That was $2,800 a day. And the goal for that, the reason why I set that up is because that's about $1 million a year in revenue. Now. In the last 12 months, I did 2.6 million on eBay. Just to give you guys an idea of the average, that's almost $8,000 a day listing. New items going onto the platform. So the number one thing that determines your velocity on eBay is your sell-through rate, and then also your average amount of listings that are going up each day. So it's important to understand how many items you wanna put up and your schedule. Those are the two secret weapons of how to do this. You essentially figure out how long it takes you to do your whole process, which we'll go over in the remaining steps of this video, 
how long do the, does it take you to do those things? And then what time of day are you actually doing that? So for me, the schedule is really set. When I'm really cranking, I work on reselling for an hour in the morning. Christine and I make a video in the middle of the day and the rest of the day I plan the rest of my, my reselling business. So it's important to understand schedule is king. I know schedule is a word that people are allergic to and they're saying, I don't wanna work on anybody's schedule. Well, here's the thing, you are working. Everyone has a master, so it might as well be yourself. You make your own schedule, make your own plan, crush it so that you can get off at a reasonable time. Most people who are running an eBay shop should be able to be done by noon. I don't want you to do this and work from six in the morning till 12 at midnight. If you've done that, then I have failed you. Essentially, you should be able to knock out your reselling business, to be honest, in two to four hours a day, besides sourcing. Everyone's sourcing is gonna be different, but the amount of time you actually work on listing, photography, shipping, should be under four hours a day or you're doing it wrong. So I appreciate you guys are gonna get into the next step now. Number three is to find profitable items locally. This is the number one cheat code for reselling because there are things around you that other people don't have access to. So it's important to understand in your area is a thrift stores, is a garage sales, is a flea markets. Do you have liquidation centers near you? Do you have a recycling center near you? All these can play to your advantage. Um, we have a call in our mentorship group from January 5th where my colleague Tekken Sports goes over how to find local options. But that's something we talk about every single morning in our mastermind calls, how to take advantage of what's around you because that local sourcing route that local way that you can find profitable items at your honey hole, your relationships, your repeat buying allows you to build credibility and trust with people in whatever industry that you're in. This is really important and something you need to work on all the time. So one thing I wanna talk about is these seven steps that I'm talking about right now are not sequential. You actually have to work on all of them at the same time. That's why reselling is so difficult because when you're running your own business, you're the manager of your own time. You have to do all of the own work and you have to do the entrepreneurial side, which is plan, budget. That's why so many entrepreneurs have, like they don't spend a lot of time on, on things or stuff or they just streamline down to the basics of what they need to do because there's so much stuff that needs to get done during a day. So the bonus tip, so please smash the like button is, you wanna simplify your life. And this is the reason why simplifying your life is not in the seven most important steps is there's a lot of people who don't complicate their life in the first place. I know that sounds crazy, but you choose to make your life complicated. So that's why it's not in the seven steps because all those things that you choose to do that all those spinning plates that people work on, those are all optional. You don't have, you can just skip all those and just do the main thing. You don't need emotions or feelings or motivation to run an eBay store. It's mechanical. You can just set up all the different pieces, put it on your schedule, knock it out. And you don't have to feel like it. In fact, I've been doing this since 2017 full time. I never really feel like reselling, it's just part of my schedule. So once you set up everything, it's gonna make it a lot easier. So that's gonna bring us directly into step number four, which is creating dedicated space for your photography. I actually think that you need a dedicated space um, for listing, a dedicated place for sorting, all those need a dedicated area so you put things back in the same place and it makes it a lot easier for you to find it, makes it more streamlined, it speeds up what you're doing. So the dedicated photo setup is important. I recommend if you're gonna do objects like a hard goods, I recommend a simple light box, nothing fancy. A simple light box is fine. You can use daylight if you can, that's better, but doesn't need to be fancy, any flat surface. When Christine and I listed random items, we just went outside and did it um, on the porch doesn't need to be fancy anywhere simple with natural lighting ample lighting is great doesn't have to be white background if you're gonna do clothing like I do a flat lay is preferable um, because if you use a mannequin in my opinion it's more flattering than the item actually looks like and a lot of mannequins pin I a pin uh, fabric so it looks a certain way and I feel like that's disingenuous kind of to the customer. If you lay it flat and show all the material, people can kind of figure out how it would lay on them. Not exactly like a mannequin, but a mannequins, mannequins are often deceiving and can lead to more returns. So a dedicated photo area is really important. If you're looking for the mentorship, the best way to do this would be to post a picture of your photo setup. So I'm gonna shout out Eleanor and I'm gonna put a thumbnail here of her photo setup. This is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in the group because she put all the different components of her photo setup and why they're set up that way. That is brilliant and that's how you can be successful as a reseller is talk about 
why is this supply within arm's reach here? Why is it this height? Why is it this color? Why is it this angle? All those things matter because you're the one working in your store. And if you don't understand what all these things mean, that means that you're just getting started. There's nothing wrong with that. But self-awareness again is key. Understanding your photo setup is really, really, really important because you don't have to waste time transferring items to your computer. You don't have to waste time looking for a camera. If you um, use a dedicated camera, you also don't have to worry about distract distraction from your cell phone. So it's important to really create a photography setup. Post your photography setup in our Facebook group so that we can all give you guys advice. Okay, number five is create a quality listing. So whatever platform that you choose to, to sell on, the listing part is really critical because it helps buyers find your item. So the nine quality components of a listing we'll go over. We go over this in depth in our group, but title, very, very important so people can find what they're looking for. Um, photos, you also want to work on condition description. So what is the condition of the item? If you're in the resale category like me, you need to describe what your item's flaws are, if there's any discolorations, what the condition is. That's really important for the um, for the condition description the actual description is more like features what kind of buttons what kind of features what kind of size that's important too so customers kind of know what they're looking for so you want to describe items like they can't see the photos you want to take the photos as if they can't see the description those are really important item specifics are how um, platforms categorize your items it's important to put in as many item specifics that are accurate as possible so we go over all those different components and then you want to go over returns you want to go over shipping and you want to go over price and make sure that it all matches. So again, remember, I haven't mentioned that you need to sign up for an eBay store, or optimize an eBay store, because you actually don't need that to be successful on eBay. I have that as number eight on my list of seven things because optimizing your store would make your sales go a little bit faster, but it's really important to understand you don't need a store, you don't need promotions, you don't need marketing, and you don't need social media to be successful as a reseller. You just need these nine quality components, and those are the most important things to start with. So number six is a date-based inventory system. And what I mean by that is you wanna organize your inventory by date, not by bin. I've done both, and doing it by date allows you to find items if they're in the wrong place. So in this example, we have 14429, and it's in front of 14430. And essentially the larger number um, is further back, and so if we went one, two, three, four, five, if five was the oldest item, it'd be easy to find it if it was in the wrong place because it would be in that area. Sometimes five might be in between three and four, but if you have a system that's not based on date, it's very difficult to find your items. So I recommend a date-based system, which allows you to cross-reference the email that you get from the website when you generate a new listing. Let's say you have number 37, sales. If you can't find that item for some reason, you can look in your email, figure out what date it is, and go find number 36 and number 38, and it should be in that region. A date-based inventory system is important because if you can't find your items, you're gonna end up getting defects on your account. And defects are like you can't find the item or you're out of stock, and those are really, really harmful for your account health. So you have to maintain the best account health that you can when you're running an online store. And that's gonna help the platform give you, you have, that's gonna help them have the trust to give you the traffic you need to be successful on the platform. So a date-based inventory, inventory system is huge. It works with any size item, any size box, anything. So date-based systems take up a little bit more space in some circumstances, but it's worth it because you'll never lose an item. Number seven is you need to understand how to ship items. So whether it's first class, priority mail, those are the main post office ways. Express mail, overnight shipping is important to offer in my opinion, but you don't use it very often. UPS, FedEx, these are the main different ways that you need to understand shipping. It doesn't take too long to understand shipping, but understand it's kind of like a college level course. Okay, so it's gonna take you three to five months to really absorb all the different types of applications. Um, but again, just take your time. When you use eBay in the beginning, I don't recommend calculated shipping because they can be really dramatically different. I would just pick flat rate and guess by doing your homework. Enter in the item in a calculator online and figure out what it might cost to ship. Enter that in as a flat rate. And then as you get more, gain more experience shipping items, you're gonna develop a better understanding of how to ship items. But this is really, really, really critical. And a lot of people don't spend time 
figuring out how to save a buck or two with shipping. They don't learn about cubic shipping. They don't learn about what box sizes and poly mailers make sense for their items. This is also a perfect opportunity to post in the Facebook group what you sell and ask, is there a cheaper way of shipping than this? Saying what's the cheapest way to ship without doing your own research is not understanding self-awareness and not understanding what your current state is. So no one can help you do this from scratch, but we can help you from where you are at. So if you say, this is my very first listing, this is where I'm at and I'm stuck, there's gonna be 2000 people in the group that can help you. But if you just raise your hand and don't have a question, it's gonna be very, very difficult to help you get to the next level. Number eight is optimizing and setting up an eBay store. Now, the reason why it's number eight and not in the first seven is it's not required. Um, opening an eBay store is kind of just like a moniker signaling thing like, oh, I have an eBay store. It doesn't actually mean you know what you're doing. It's just like a participation trophy. With an eBay store, though, the reason why you would sign up is it gives you some advanced things that can help you, like running promotions and dealing with aged inventory. And that's the main thing. You don't want items in your store to become stale and get pushed down in the sales alg in the search algorithm and then never be found by your customers. So running a store comes with a different promotions, and we'll go over all that in the group. This is order discounts, shipping discounts, volume discounts, running coupons that are public and private, running sales events that include a markdown, running a newsletter, going over promoted listings, and what is your priced, price strategy for items that get older? Do you discount items when they're older? Do you run a sale? What do you do as items age? Uh, I'm, it's not a good idea to just set it and forget it um, unless you're selling rare antiquities where you need to wait for a specific buyer to find it. And the example that eBay gave me was when you're selling a Rolex cuff link for the watch, um, there's only certain people looking for that cuff link. If you adjust the price, it's not going to really affect demand. Let's say that a cuff link is $200. You pricing it at $100 doesn't make itself faster. You still have to wait for a customer to be looking for that cuff link. If you have the only one available, the difference between $200 and $100 for that specific customer doesn't matter. Okay, because it's already a $20,000 watch that cufflink is not gonna make a difference in the pricing. So you have to understand aging items and pricing strategies are different. There are certain items that don't require any discounts, any strategy, and there are other items that require every single trick in the book because they're too common, they're too flooded, not very many people are looking for it and it's not popular. So those items require every trick in the book. Something really popular doesn't require any promotions. That's why it's not required to have an eBay store. That's just something that people like to do to distract themselves from the original seven steps in this video. Um, so number nine, understanding the eBay traffic page. Um, this is where we talk about impressions and click-through rate. Impressions is how often people see your items as they scroll through. So that's they, they physically see the store. When they click on it, that's the click-through rate. And then the sale conversion is how many people who click on it actually buy it. So it's important to understand this because it allows you to find better items. But again, it's not mandatory. You can do really, really well on eBay just checking the solds before you buy an item and verifying this has a sales history. This has sold before. I'm going to buy it and it should sell again. You don't need to understand the, the selling metrics in the um, eBay seller platform. But what I recommend that you use that page for is just to determine how many items are selling per day and how many you're listing. I call that reseller nirvana, where you, you list 10, sell 10, list 20, sell 20. You list and sell the same number of items and your store st stays the same size. So again, on that page, the main thing I want you to pay attention to is how many items are you selling? And then ideally your traffic over time is slowly going up and your sales are going up over time. And then number 10, understanding the eBay seller metrics, which is just your account health, uh, making sure that you don't cancel orders because you can't find them. Make sure that you answer any customer inquiries quickly and answer cases. Those are important to keep your defect rate low. And the final one, this is the bonus part again. I just want to mention that when you're simplifying your life and you're getting rid of distractions, this is going to turbocharge you if you've been distracted. So we go over in the group like how to manage your workflow, how to put your phone in airplane mode, how to put your phone in a different room, how to let your family know, okay, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., I am not to be disturbed. Um, you set those parameters for yourself. And so when you respect your time, other people will respect your time a lot more too. And it's just, it's a give and take. You let people know exactly how you want to run your business. They will treat you the same way. So again, we go over this mentorship 
every single day. Our group is 24 seven. We have a Zoom call that runs literally 24 hours a day with sellers inside of it, discussing different topics and strategies. But these, sa these same seven steps apply to everybody. And I'm just gonna highlight them again for you guys. Number one is determining your current state. Where are you at? Where are your resources? What do you have? What do you not have? What do you not know? What do you know? Number two, set a listing goal, build a schedule. In our mentorship, a schedule is required. You don't need a schedule in other people's mentorships, but in ours, if you wanna be successful, you have to be able to repeatedly do what you say you want to do. Number three, find profitable items locally. I find it very difficult to find items sourcing online uh, just because the cost of shipping oftentimes makes it not worth it. Um, number four, a dedicated area for photography. Number five, how to create a quality listing. There's nine components to that. Um, number six, create a date-based inventory system so you can find items. Number seven, understand shipping. Number eight, optimizing an online or your eBay store. Number nine, understanding the eBay traffic page. And then number 10, understanding the eBay seller metrics, which is just your account health. And then the bonus is again, going over mental health, um, how to set the right mindset so you can be successful, how to get rid of distractions. That's something that we go over all the time. But again, you, these are all things that you just made up. Most people um, invent all these complications in their business um, that you can just easily remove. And remember, this is my final thought for the day. Um, in making progress daily, a lot of making progress is trying to figure out the pursuit of less but better. So this is essentialism. This is the passionate pursuit of seeking less but better. So less things in your life, less people in your life, better relationships with the people in your life, better relationships with the products that you sell in your life. And that's it. Appreciate you guys make progress daily. This is what the mentorship is about.